All right. Well, uh, Corey, you mentioned earlier how uh, you want to get Xenophage uh, this week and how we're going to make a run on tomorrow. Uh, so today's War Corner is really, really timely. We're going to talk about the Pit Heresy and Xenophage. Um, I don't remember what order I said we were going to do the next few topics in last week, but uh, I have a feeling I'm jumping a little bit ahead here. Uh, this is going to kind of go into uh, our discussion on the Hive in general. Um, so we're going to start off with the Pit of Heresy and Xenophage today. We're going to cover over the next few weeks the Orsinium Court, Sabathun, and Zizu Arath. Um, kind of hoping <laughs> this probably would have been the week to do the Orsinium Court and Sabathun since it's a short week, but I was out of town for most of the week. So... Uh, we're we're going to cover those, we're going to get to Eris, and then we're going to kind of uh, work our way into uh, anything else that's leading into Beyond Light. We just have a whole lot of Hive to cover from Shadowkeep. So, uh, the Pit of Heresy. Uh, Pit of Heresy is, of course, the second dungeon in the Destiny franchise, after the uh, Shattered Throne, which, if you recall, we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it centers around the Hidden Swarm on the Moon. They are attempting to revive their champion, Zulmok. Zulmok was a, a sword-bearing champion uh, of the Hive on the Moon in the wake of Crota's death, uh, kind of became uh, one of their leaders in a way um, on the Moon, and um, eventually he he was he was slain, he was killed, and uh, some of the granddaughters granddaughters uh, of Oryx decided that they were going to try to uh, they're going to try to revive him, um, and the ritual that they were committing goes of course against the sword logic. Uh, them and Hashladoon. Uh, who you'll remember from the uh, the Scarlet Tower strike. Uh, we go kill her. She's the daughter of Oryx. Uh, we find out that she was trying to use the Pit of Heresy, and specifically Zulamok, to uh, revive Oryx himself, to revive the Taken King. And they were able to do this if they cheated the sword logic to bring him back, because when the Guardians slew him on the Dreadnought, according to the sword logic, the Guardians should have absorbed his power and taken his throne world for themselves. The Guardians declined to do that. So um, that may come back into play with the Destiny Content Vault. We may end up having to seize it for ourselves with the darkness uh, eventually. So yeah, yeah. Just uh, so like when we killed Oryx, we were supposed to take the throne for ourselves, the throne world. Yes, we so... were supposed to take it throne world. Uh, by the power of the sword logic, when you defeat somebody else, you absorb their power. You take their power for yourself. Right. So. The Guardians declined, but yes. if we have to go back and do it with the darkness, does that, I mean, to make sure the throne world doesn't, like, to make sure Savathun doesn't take over the throne world, do you think we have to take it to keep it from her? Um, I personally think that Savathun, because Savathun knows ways to infiltrate Oryx's throne world. She actually sends Kira to do that way back in the lore, like millennia ago, mm -hmm. sent uh, Kira the Vexmind in there. And uh, I'm actually kind of wondering who's in control of the throne world now. I do strongly suspect it's Savathun. I do think next fall we're going back to the Dreadnought. And either in a reprisal of King's Fall, like maybe he's been resurrected somehow, we have to kill him. Uh, I could see that happening. Like, oh, you have to beat the reprised King's Fall in order to access the uh, raid where you actually take down Sabathun for good um, to use Oryx's power. I could see that now that we have the powers of darkness. Maybe we're like, oh, well, I'll think about taking that. Um, but we know canonically our character, the young wolf, uh, the, the, the hero of the Red War, whatever you want to call them, the Avenger of Cade Six, uh, has declined to take that power and according to the storyline we should have according to the sword logic we should have we rebuke it instead so what hash Ladoon and the other death singers are trying to do was uh is literally heresy they're kind of trying to do what knockers did they're trying necromancy in a way to try and bring back oryx to fill that void and they would be able to do that through a bastardization of the sword logic since we never claimed his power for ourselves that means that part of him still endures and of course, there is the touch of malice still floating around out there. We know that Eris herself was the last one seen with it. So uh, I have a very strong feeling that's going to come back into play over the next year as well. Great. Uh, yes. <laughs> but can't, there's another exotic weapon that actually ties into the Pit of Heresy. Go, can't, go ahead. Can't wait for uh, everybody to say <laughs> people who can't rage with them if they don't have touch of malice. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, with, I mean, with uh, how, what do you call it? Um well of Radiance works these days. Uh, well of Radiance with a Titan bubble. I could absolutely see that becoming the new you must have this in order to uh, down raid bosses in one attempt. Um, 
I really hope it doesn't get to that point because there's so many more options now for DPS than there used to be. Mm-hmm. But there's still like three or four that are really, really, really solid. Um, I could see that being a thing. Like this next weapon that we're about to talk about. Xenophage has become one of those weapons. Um, Xenophage is the exotic machine gun that we find within a secret quest that is tied to the Pit of Heresy and the Moon. And it contains a Guardian in it. Um, so yeah, Bear with me on this one. This one's actually really cool. Um, Eris Morn's old friend, uh, the hunter Omar Aga, uh, was part of Eris's doomed expedition to the moon to slay Crota. Um, Eris is the, of course, the sole survivor of that. She watched uh, her friends die. Um, one of her friends, uh, Vel, dies from being torn by the thrall. Uh, Toland goes crazy, of course, following the Death Singer song, and it now wanders the uh, Ascendant Plains. And Omar. Omar was uh, personally, his death was personally watched by Eris, and it was excruciating. The Hive tortured him, uh, specifically a wizard. One of the wizards that we slay in the Crota's End Raid uh, tortured him endlessly, experimented on him. They not only ripped his light out, to feed, they literally fed his light to hive soldiers and to the thrall to make them more powerful for Crota. They rip his soul out as well. And Eris thinks that he's dead. He's gone. Decades later, I mean, I, hundreds of years, I believe, have passed at this point um, to the present day. Omar awakens. And through the Xenophage quest, we find out um, where he is. We go and we do the special room inside the Pit of Heresy. We recover... Uh, we recover an object and we take it to Eris. And Eris takes him and puts him into an old machine gun, which we find out the Xenophage was actually Omar God's gun. Uh, kind of continuing a trend of us getting legendary weapons that have been wielded by other guardians, such as the mountaintop with Shax's weapon at the Battle of Twilight Gap. Um, we've wielded, of course, Whisper of the Worm, the Touch of Malice, the Black Spindle, you know, all of which are tied to Hive Gods. Uh, Ray's Lighter was uh, a model of, a replica of Shax's sword. Uh, there, there's been plenty of instances in the past where we've done this. And so when she gives us the gun and we read the lore on there, th- this is kind of what I want to focus on today is the lore card there. It's all from Omar's perspective. It's basically his thoughts and his mind. He's a bug. They've literally turned him into a bug. They didn't kill him. He's still conscious as a bug living inside your gun, which is just, it, it, it's insane. If you, if you go back and look at some of the images from PAX last year, we saw this gun on display and you could see the bug in it. We're like, what the hell is this? This is going to be the coolest thing we've ever seen in this game. He goes, I knew it. Knew I'd be back one day. Only this time I was something else. Something not human. Not by choice, of course. Those damn hive. They weren't just trying to kill me. They were using me to get my light, to drain it from my soul for their sick experiments. But the idiots screwed up. They didn't just drain my light. They took the whole lot, the entire thing, soul and all. I'm still me, just not the me I knew. The one with two arms and two legs. I'm something smaller now. But honestly, it's no bother. The fire inside me, it came to. And it rages now more than ever before. The fools have no clue what they've done, no idea the price they'll pay. I will have my vengeance in this life and not the next. Ooh. Um, yeah, when Eris hands us the gun, she basically admonishes uh, us to use Omar's weapon to desecrate the hive with it. And the result is the best, arguably the best DPS weapon in the entire game right now. Uh, <laughs> Xenophage is a really cool weapon. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely have a full on discussion once we get uh, Corey Xenophage. But it, I think it definitely has one outside of Touch of Malice and Whisper, it probably has the coolest story behind an exotic to mm-hmm. me at least. Um, just how it ties into the lore and it actually ties into the storyline. Like a lot of these exotics, they're just like, oh, these are kind of cool weapons. But I like ones like this with these interesting quests. Like Divinity is another one of those. Like uh, Divinity is literally a Vex weapon that we take for ourselves. Um, Whisper of the Worm is Zol's soul, but in a gun. Like he, that's why we hear Zol talking in that mission. Is he basically abandons he abandons Nacris for us 
uh, he recognizes that we are worthy of wielding the power of a god. So instead of being doomed to die forever, he's like, nope, screw it. I'm throwing in my lot with the Guardian. I'm, I'm going to serve this guy now. Um, just like the touch of malice allowed Oryx's spirit to technically endure. Um, so I, I just I think it's so fascinating when we do missions like this that tie into the overall storyline and aren't just like, oh, that was a cool drop. Like, there's actually a reason, you know, the, the, the reason, the lore behind Bastion that we got back in Season of the Dawn. We were wandering the corridors of time and come across a funeral, come across our grave. And that's how we get the gun. We get the gun from our grave in the future. And Saint, Saint 14 basically saying, you know, he, he was laid to rest with, uh, the Guardian was laid to rest with their favorite gun. You know, and, but you can't change something once somebody's dead. And then he remembers how we saved him. In the past, and he goes, but maybe, maybe something can still change. Basically, talking to us in the past, you know, he's talking to us through time, almost like like he can sense that we're there. And I think weapons like that that alter ultimately the story is going to progress no matter what. But kind of in in a true role playing game sense, almost alter your fate, almost alter your guardian storyline. We have so many hands in saving people or. Uh, enduring things that probably we shouldn't be playing with. You know, like the Whisper, the Touch of Malice. And then there's this. We're helping a Guardian who is still alive just kind of with a cockroach and mowing down enemies with it. And it's absurdly powerful. It's beautiful. 